All right, all right. This is part two of how strong is Rimuru Tempest, the follow-up video from the previous one. But apparently, there's like multiple parts to this. This this dude's just making like four different parts on how strong is Rimuru, which honestly I enjoy a lot. Let's see what he has to say in part two. As I've said before, a vast majority of Rimuru's power comes from his skills. Okay. Everything that makes him as strong as he is, as well as as strong as he's going to be, all comes from this ever-growing collection of abilities. Which is possible because of his physical makeup, right? Monster body, soul of a human, magicules and skills better. And on top of that, Predator plus Great Sage allows him to learn, evolve new skills at an exponential rate that no one else can ever compare with. So, if we're gonna understand exactly how strong Rimuru is, we're gonna have to go through every skill he's picked up along the way. Every skill! There's no point skipping to where he is right now in the anime because a lot of what happens early on serves as the foundation for the power he gains later. It helps us to make sense out of the evolution of certain skills. If that's a topic that you're not familiar with, then I Part highly one. recommend watching the latest video on how skills work first. But first, the sponsor of today's video. I'm gonna be talking in a way that assumes you've already seen that plus the part one that came out before it. But first. So be sure to check those out before watching this one. But first. Now, before we get started. But the first! Sure has been kind enough to Okay, okay. Sometimes it's but first, sometimes it's before we get started. That's like his cue for the ad read to start. But first, sponsor of today's video or, you know, uh, but what, what was this again? Skillshare has been kind enough to out before watching this what, what, one. And then? Now, before we get started. Before we get started. Skillshare has been yeah, kind yeah. enough. Before we get started. That's, that's the one. That's the one. All right, you guys know what to do. Use your discount code and you use for your first discount off of Skillshare. Back to the main content. Starting with his reincarnation, Rimuru was born with several intrinsic skills in the form of resistances. At first, these were the temperature-based tolerance ones of resist heat and resist cold. That was so funny. Against the fight against Ifrit. I'm like, oh shit, finally something that may be able to defeat us. And we get lit up in a pillar of flames. And I'm like, oh shit, it's finally over, guys. Rimuru's gonna evaporate. And it's like, well, actually, it doesn't do shit. He's too OP. But these were almost immediately combined together to create the evolved skill Resist Temperature. What this does is it basically grants the ability to withstand extremely high or low temperatures. I'm just gonna assume that like his body is in a permanent state of just like the perfect room temperature and everything is perfectly fine. Effectively nullifying any damage that could possibly be taken via ice or flame type attacks. Next we have Resist Piercing Weapon and Resist Melee Attack. What the fuck is that? What? So like... Resist melee attacks basically means that any like attack that you get hit by a weapon, physical force or whatnot, it kind of deflects it, right? And then sometimes to counter that, what there'll be is like some kind of penetration, some kind of pierce. But then Rimuru can also resist piercing. But he can never be penetrated. So no one can fuck Rimuru. He'll never lose. Not even his virginity will be lost. He will never be penetrated. Hmm. Then again... I think Rimuru is the perfect makeup to be like, listen, if we want to be good merchants, if I was Rimuru, here, here's what I would do. If I really wanted to make money and if I, if I had the body of Rimuru, this is what I would do. I would start baiting all the Kumers with my feminine looks. And then I would develop Rimuru Onaho. Slime Onaho. I would mass produce that shit. Then I would sell it to everybody. Humans, demi-humans, Angels, fuck it. They can take it too. We would make so much money off of Tempest on a whole. These are resistances that work to mitigate the damage received by any sort of physical attack. In the odd case that Rimuru does somehow take a little bit of damage though, his cancel pain resistance would prevent him from even feeling it. But nothing can hurt him, and in the off chance that it kind of does, it's like, nah, fuck your pain. I don't care, bro. That doesn't mean he hasn't taken any damage, but it does mean that the sensation of pain has been completely removed. HP drops, but he doesn't so, feel given it. given that he can't feel when he's been hurt, the way he determines how much damage he's sustained is, of course, with the help of his Great Sage skill. This will automatically determine- So technically, he could be taking so much damage, but not even know because of pain resistance. And he could reach zero HP and just die. But Grace is just like, hey, your HP is dropping, what are you doing? And the percentage of damage in which his body is taken, then follow it up with the best course of action needed in order to heal it. Usually, that course of action would be the process of predating, analyzing, then repairing any damaged part of the body. 
Okay. It's a combination of the unique skill Predator and the intrinsic slime skill Self-Regeneration, both of which we already covered in part 1. So, after that, the only other resistance he gained was one towards electricity. The rest of the reincarnation process involved the development of his extremely overpowered unique skills. The two main aspects that we now know serve to make him as powerful as he is and as powerful as he's going to be. But since we're already familiar with those, yeah, let's move we on that. to the skills and protections he gained from his encounter with Vel- Protections! Finally on the stat chart, right? It's like protection, crest of the storm or something. Nora. It was from this single chance meeting that Rimuru was able to learn what's probably one of his most underrated abilities. A rather basic extra skill that goes by the name of Magic Sense. Magic Sense. Let me guess. You're sensing magic. Although acquiring it isn't entirely difficult. No? Making the most out of what it does most definitely is. You see, Magic Sense allows the user to perceive the particles of magic floating around them. Then, by observing how these particles Detect are affected by the waves of light and sound passing through them, the user can take that information and calculate how the area around them looks and sounds. They're basically using the dis- Almost sounds like a fucking bat using sonar waves because they're blind, but being able to detect their surroundings through sound waves. Distortions in the magic particles around them to produce visible images and audible sounds. That's basically what it is, right? Rimuru is a bat, but a slime. And instead of using sound waves, it's magic particles, magicules to kind of detect. Now, normally that level of information would be beyond what any human could possibly comprehend. But by allocating the management of all that data over to Great Sage, the only thing Rimuru needs to be concerned with after is the output. A complete 360 degree view of his surroundings along with all the perceivable sounds from a range of Whoa. over a few hundred meters. You know, Anin is like commentating over this feat with like hype music playing in the background makes this scene so much more significant. Because in the anime in episode 1, I'm just like watching it passively and Rimuru just like, Oh, I don't, I can't see! Magic sense! Oh, it works! And I'm like, uh, Okay, but it's like, you know, just the extra context really just like fleshes out the actual feats and I can't really like appreciate it until this. It's a skill that basically makes it impossible for Rimuru to ever get ambushed. Unless there was some- <laughs> I mean, okay, unless, right? I'm like, what do you mean we can't get ambushed? <laughs> like, come on. The beauty strikes. The beauty makes her move. Listen, I love that episode though, right? I think that as much as I shit on Yuki, and, you know, what the Eastern Merchant kind of tipped off. I think that because they did that, we were able to get such hype scenes. So, yes, it sucks that we got backstabbed. But it did lead to amazing moments like this. Some sort of phenomenon that didn't actually interfere with the magic particles in the environment. The complete and total awareness that Magic Sense grants makes pretty much everything perceivable all the time. And yeah, we saw Medium too. That's why I think it's one of the more underrated skills in Rimuru's arsenal. Why? 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 Why did he show him there? This is just like the equivalent of showing like a big booby girl on a thumbnail to capture people's attention, right? Because this is the greater spirit that went into Shizu during that labyrinth arc with the kids. Is there, is there something important here with what he's saying in the spirit? That's why I think it's one of the more underrated skills in Rimuru's arsenal. She's not really a skill. She's just a greater spirit that we summon, which summoning is a skill. Probably doesn't matter. Probably doesn't matter. Next, we have the divine protection known as the Crest of the Storm. Although it's one of the more vague fundamental properties of the world, it does bear some. What did I just call her? Did I call her Shizu? I I don't even remember what I said when I when I was referring to the greatest spirits. You know, what 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 name did I say? Shit, you guys are on a fucking fifteen second delay right now. You guys will type in chat whenever I say that. Similar. Chloe. To Chloe. Names. I mean, the protection itself was something Rimuru received the instant he became a tempest. But the exact specifics as to what it provides for him isn't something that we're fully aware of yet. What we okay. do know is that Chloe, the Crest of the Storm resulted in a modification to Rimuru's elemental alignment. What? It shifted whatever it was before to the element of Storm. The Crest of Protection basically is giving us like the main element that we are. Storm, wind, with lightning, stuff like that. Ah, oh, I thought the Protection was like... You know, what it suggests, it's like protecting us, but then you could argue that, yes, by gaining these skills, we are doing, you know, we got self-defensive capabilities. A kind of specialized area unique to the Tempest name that forcibly adjusts any elemental skills or magic towards the side of the storm element. Cool. It's actually the reason why the basic flame or lightning skills he inherited from others were evolved into the storm versions we see in the anime. I think it's so cool. I, I think that black flame, like different color flames, it's not the traditional fire, but it's just straight up 
black like this. I love the Tempest's influence on all the different skills we use, man. Continuing with Rimuru's traversal through the cave, there were quite a few additional common and extra skills he acquired before leaving. Most were from the whole slew of monsters he absorbed along the way. Okay. But there was also the water manipulation one that he developed all on his own. The water blade? This was a combination of hydraulic propulsion, current movement, and water blade. Yep. Essentially giving Rimuru complete control over the element of water. As for the others, the Tempest Serpent gave him poisonous breath and sense heat source. These monsters are Poisonous cracked. breath being a powerful corrosive area of effect attack. And, and like you would never- we haven't used a poison breath in a long time. I think the last time we used it against Steve Fritz, maybe, maybe before that too. But like this cave again, I think a lot of people, and here, and, and, and this goes back to my my point of when you're watching Isekai, pay attention in episode one because episode one will just gloss over such important shit so fast, and you will never be able to pick up on it unless you actually study the show and you'll realize all the shit that you have questions about. The founder, the, the like the fundamentals are all in episode one, and like even this shit. Like, all these different monsters that we killed in the cave. Like, people watching this for the first time are probably like, who are these random monsters? Doesn't really matter. But it's like, they built up the building blocks for everything. Powerful corrosive area of effect attack. And sense heat source allowing for the detection of any heat emitting objects in the vicinity. In a similar vein, the centipede creature gave Rimuru paralyzing breath. A less damaging but just as effective ability as poisonous breath. I haven't seen this then in a while. the big spider gave two different variants of threads that could be emitted from the body. Did these monsters spawn because of Eldora's magicules? Because that's what something I didn't even know before. Like the whole mechanic of monsters spawn off of heavy, dense magicules. So like the monsters and everything in the cave is just so OP because purely of Veldora's magicules. It's, it's not like the cave was OP because it's, it's not like cave was already OP. It's just like, no, it is because of Veldora. Sticky threat for entrapping enemies and steel threat to bolster one's defenses. Moving on to the bat, this possessed the intrinsic skills of ultrasonic wave and drain. But because drain was determined to be an inferior version of predator, Rimuru <laughs> decided to ignore it instead of add it to his arsenal. Damn, we already have a better skill, I'm sorry. Ultrasonic wave on the other hand was actually quite useful for a number of things. Initially, it was only intended to be used for echolocation, but it was after a bit of experimentation that Rimuru figured out how to use it as his voice. He began to use the skill's supersonic waves as a means to project sound. All right, and this is another thing. Before we couldn't see, so we used magic sense to be able to, you know, see things right through magic skills. And then this is like we couldn't speak, so we used that, you know, what was it? Just like uh, almost like echolocation ability to just fucking terrify the goblins. Oh, like we can fucking talk. It's like yo yo inside voice, please, please. Oh wait. There An idea that came when he realized that the waves could also be used to render enemies unconscious. So all it took was a little manipulation, and suddenly Rimuru possessed the ability to speak. Now the last skill gained while in the cave was the lizard's body armor. It wasn't really anything special Just compared to all the other armor? resistances he was born with, but Harden? the hardening it did to his outer Literally body added that extra layer of reinforcement. Okay. Now, after Rimuru had left the cave, the next set of skills he received was from the absorption of a direwolf. Well, God, it was he... a trio of highly useful utility skills that go by the names of coercion, keen smell, and thought communication. Coercion? From taking Ranga? Most of which do pretty Ranga's much dad? what you'd expect them to. Coercion is a form of intimidation that scales with the strength Okay, of the user. intimidation. Got the it. more powerful the user is, then the less likely it is that the target will be able to resist the skill's effects. Kind of like a more tame version of Einstein. Can't be spoiled. I can't. No Overlord references. I cannot. I cannot be spoiled. Nope, nope, nope. Smell is really just a highly enhanced version of the sense of smell. Then, thought communication refers to a more advanced version of telepathy. What I mean is that, rather than telepathically linking with only a single target, thought okay. communication enables this link to occur across multiple people. It creates this space in which the user can- Our entire village can talk amongst ourselves like in a goop chat. And freely share whatever picture is in their mind with whoever else is in that space. Anything? Oh, this could be so abused. Like dumb kids in back in high school, bro. They were always drawing fucking dicks everywhere. But now, if the kids had this kind of power, they could just like fucking 
they could just, you know, intrude your fucking mind by just thinking of a dick and be like, <laughs> fake. And you're like, what the fuck? I didn't ask for this. It's like, they're like fucking airdropping. <laughs> exactly airdropping. They're fucking airdropping the images that I didn't fucking want. What are you doing? Allowing for a large group to work as a collective much more easily and over a much larger area. Now, the other two skills gained from the Dire Wolf are Dark Lightning and Shadow Step. That is called Black Lightning. Same shit. Shadow Step comes from the storm evolution of the Dire Wolf known as the Star Wolf. And it's the ability to use the shadows as a means to hide or quickly travel somewhere. Gulped. Dark Lightning, on the other hand, is a very powerful extra skill gained after a Star Wolf has evolved into a Tempest Star Wolf. The basic version allows for some form of control over the range and power in which the attack is capable of, usually by adjusting the level of magic kills applied to it. But with the combination of a certain new skill later on, Rimuru can freely manipulate the lightning any which way he wants. Cool. It's a very destructive ability with a power grade that's said to be higher than the A rank. So that means at the very least it has enough firepower to destroy a small village. Which doesn't come close to Dragon Nava, right? Not even close, because like this power is A rank. Well, A rank. We're using a different set of tier list. Actually, I don't know. the. Uh, that's going to be another anime in this video we got to watch, right? There's like Catastrophe, Calamity tier stuff, but is A rank also there? Does it go like D to fucking S and then above S is like Calamity, Catastrophe, stuff like that? I don't know, but clearly this isn't really as small as strong as Dragon Nava, right? In the A rank. So that means at the very least it has enough firepower to destroy a small village. Which makes sense considering it's one of the skills that's said to Goodbye, have originally Eurozania. belonged to Baldora. Moving on. The next set of abilities comes from the whole encounter with Shizue and Ifrit. But before those two were absorbed into his body, Rimuru first gained the elemental magic known as Icicle Lance, a basic projectile type attack that fires one or many icicles in a targeted direction. Eren loves using this too. I remember this fucking skill skin as Ifrit. Eren fucking spammed this too. It was immediately after this that Rimuru used a combination of sticky and steel threat to create a sturdier compound. One that was not only strong enough to keep Ifrit restrained, but also durable enough to withstand his flames. This would later become a new skill that Rimuru would refer to as Sticky Steel Thread. Now, once Ifrit- Every, every time they say sticky stuff like that, all I remember is that Jojo clip I see of a guy named like Bucci or something, and he goes, STICKY FINGERS! Steel Thread. Now, once Ifrit had been consumed by Predator, what came with him were the skills Replication, Combustion, and Ranged Barrier. Okay. Another trio of skills that would serve as the basis for quite a few more powerful ones in the future. Replication was the ability- Tempest. On a hole. ...to create clones of oneself. Identical copies of the user that can be freely controlled via simple commands- Fuck Tempest on a hole. Tempest sex doll. You want your own Rimuru? Buy up! Pay up! There it is! We can mass produce them! It's from within a one kilometer radius. The interesting thing about these clones though is that they also possess every skill that the original possesses. The only exception- Oh! This clone ability is basically what Soei uses all the time. The interesting thing about these clones though is that- This is it. This is the sharing, give, take. I thought Soei just always kind of had it, but it's like, no, the cloning... Rimuru kind of had it, and then provided it to Soei and Soei uses that. I thought Soei also always just had it by default because he's like a sneaky ninja. That they also possess every skill that the original possesses. The only exception is that they can't use unique or ultimate skills. Everything else is available to use at a level of power Def proportional to the amount of magic kills used to create them. So this may seem like the clones are practically perfect copies of the original, but they also bear the downside of possessing almost zero stamina making it so that casting magic isn't something they're entirely capable of. <laughs> now, unlike- <laughs> Y'all remember this one? Husbando Rimuru. Basically, Rimuru with the fucking square jaw. That's basically it, dude. Now, unlike how Ifrit or Soei can make multiple clones, Rimuru can only make one. The difference between his and Why? the others, though, is that there's no limit to the amount of power it can have. I guess quality is better than quantity. Soei can mass produce the clones. Rimuru can only do one, but there's no limit. Ifrit and Soei's clones are often very fragile, okay. but Rimuru's clone can almost reach the same power as this the original better. so long as enough magic kills are given to it. It's like, do you want like 10 ants or do you want one elephant? I'm gonna go with the elephant. That's what makes replication such a useful ability. As for the other two skills, 
those aren't really worth talking about without first knowing about the unique skill that Rimuru inherited from Shizue. Reason uh, what being is it? that those and a lot of the other skills from Shizue. Unique skill from Shizue. Something to do with fire? What did I get from her? Skills from this point on are combined together to make completely new ones. I'm not going to cover what those are today due to the increased complexity behind what they're capable of, but we should go over the key factor and how they came to be. That way we can jump straight into the new evolved skills in the beginning degenerate of the next Degenerate from Shizue? So, what really? is this simple yet powerful unique skill known as Degenerate? Degenerate wasn't Shizue? Why the fuck does Shizue have Degenerate? Does that like thematically make sense with that character? Well, unlike Great Sage or Predator, Degenerate only consists of two sub-skills. There's synthesis, which allows for the combining of multiple targets into a single object, then separation, right. which releases the inherent properties of a single target into separate objects. These were the key components behind Shizue's transformation. They allowed her human form and Ifrit's spirit form to coexist without the I side see. effect of turning herself into a Majin. This is why that, however, important. just barely scratches the surface of what this skill is capable of. I don't know. I was just like, Shizue with Degen? But, like, in order to, like, coexist with Ifrit, like, I guess that makes sense. That's her otherworldly skill that she got, right? Everyone... Well, no, 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 Well, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even the summons, they all... The shitty, you know, fucking foul new summons, right? They all also got, you know, one default skill that they come with, right? So, Degenerate is for Shizue, yeah? When in the hands of Rimuru, Degenerate becomes much more powerful, specifically with regards to the synthesis effect. I mean, the ability to mix and match any number of targets makes for situations where the possibilities are endless. Just OP magic crafting due to degenerates. Especially when you have a supercomputer like Great Sage supervising the entire process. That too. So, what Rimuru now possesses is the extremely useful ability to merge skills in a way that often evolves them and makes them better. It's not the entirety of what degenerate is capable of, but it is one of the most common ways we've seen it be used. As for separation, well, the applications of it may not be as useful as synthesis, but it is still a very worthwhile asset to have. Just breaking down shit, right? So degenerate is synthesis and separation. Synthesis is what we just talked about. You get shit and you can mix and match and fucking craft your good stuff. Separation, what I kind of suggest, just take some kind of component and break it down into other subcomponents. Like, you can use it to extract skills that aren't etched into the soul of a person. So if it's not etched into the soul of a person, where is it etched then? Or it can be used to remove poisons, toxins, and negative status effects from a person's body. Oh, that's fucking OP. Huh. Can you separate to take out toxins, debuffs from a person's body? That's fucking OP for just like healing properties. So long as the targets being separated have their own inherent properties, then separation can be used to split them apart. How far can we go with separate? Can we like separate people down to the molecular level? It just sounds like degenerate should be able to just break down a person. It's like, you know, we're just separating. We're just separating fucking limb to limb, atoms to atoms. Maybe I'm overthinking it. That's pretty much the basics of degenerate. And it's with this that Rimuru was able to begin optimizing his entire collection of abilities. So that's what we'll start off with once we get to the next video. Okay. Until then, though, as always, thank you so much for watching. And if y'all know what to do, please go go to Mr. Anning's channel, like his videos up to his channel. And this is just part two. So if part one was kind of talking about why he's so strong because of his physical makeup, monster body, human soul. And the crazy skills like Predator, sorry, Gluttony, and uh, what's it called? Sorry, Predator. Yeah, it is Predator. Pl predator and Great Sage. This one is more about... What the fuck was this one about? All the other stuff. Rimuru's like resistances. Rimuru being able to sense different things, right? All these different senses. And then like the idea of like sharing different skills off of the skills that he got. And then kind of talking about... Shizue's degenerate that he earns and how this just adds more to his powers and this is just part two there's a part three that will be next on our list so you can look forward to that whenever we start to react to that